This video is brought to you by John Robson Guitar Tuition. If you enjoy the content, please consider supporting the channel by enrolling on a course, purchasing some guitar lessons or a t-shirt, or you can join my Patreon. Now, on with the show. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. Okay, one little piece of kit that I bought a while ago, uh, just basically to do a review of, and I didn't ever think I'd be keeping it, was one of these, the Yamaha THR5 practice amp. Um, but it has become an indispensable tool for me in uh, doing my online guitar lessons. Here's why. Okay then, here's me sat doing a Skype call. It might be Skype or Zoom or Jitsi. I use a bunch of different uh, platforms to do me online lessons with. But the problem I have with any of those platforms is that any audio that comes out of the speakers connected to my PC, the one that I'm doing the Skype call on, is not heard by the person at the other end of the call. Um, I don't know why that is. It's just some anomaly with video calling platforms. I don't know what it is. The other thing I need to be able to do is to record examples to send to the other person, um, you know, for like play this like this or play that like that and just give them an audio recording that they can uh, work with. And, you know, if I fire up a DAW at the same time as I'm doing a Skype call, then mayhem ensues. Basically, Skype or Zoom or whatever, and the DAW end up scrapping with each other, and uh, it usually causes something to crash as they're fighting for control of the audio drivers. So, what I do is um, I have another PC, a little laptop bought for pennies, quite little, not pennies, but, you know, very, very cheap on eBay and that is USB'd into the uh, THR5 and I fire up all of the uh, DAW stuff on that PC and the other person can hear what I'm playing. They can hear the backing track and I can record all of the examples that I then send over to them to practice with. Now, I can already hear people uh, shouting at the screen. Yes, but the Boss Katana is an immensely good sounding amp and you can hook it up to your PC, use it as your audio interface and it, it gives better sounds than the THR5 and I wouldn't disagree with any of that. The Boss Katana is a fantastic sounding amp and yes, I think it does give uh, noticeably better, more authentic sounds than that little Yamaha does. But... Here's the weird thing that I found when I tried the Katana. Yes, you hook it up to your PC, use it as your audio interface, you can record some fantastic guitar sounds and everyone's happy until you start trying to play back audio through the Katana. It's, it's sat there, it's acting as your main um, speaker uh, system for your PC if it's uh, hooked up as the uh, audio interface. And uh, when you press play on any MP3 or WAV file or whatever, a backing track that you're going to play along with, for example, all of the amp simulations and effects, you know, overdrives, delays, reverbs, whatever you've got on your guitar sound, also gets applied to the backing track that you're trying to play along with. And I just think that's a bit weird that they would, uh, you know, kind of set it up so that it does that. Maybe there's a workaround. Maybe there's some way that you can, um, you know, kind of some setting on the amp that you can turn that off on the uh, on the audio that's playing back through the uh, through the amp speaker. But I couldn't find it. And the Yamaha doesn't do that. It just gives you the true representation of the uh, backing track or MP3 that you're trying that, that you're playing back. You know, it, it actually sounds pretty good. Actually, it's um, for such a tiny little unit. It's um, it's got a big, big sound, like a big sort of boombox kind of sound, more than good enough for for my needs. And um, so, yeah, that just um, pretty much ruled out the katana as as an option for me. Um, the Katana, as I say, does have, I think, noticeably better sounds, but the uh, the sounds that you can get out of the uh, THR5 are none too shabby uh, anyway. Uh, as I shall now demonstrate, when I want to do like a bit of a clean, strummy cowboy chord or whatever, just basically a, a nice transparent clean sound, these are the settings I use. <laughs> Thank you. 
And if I want something that's a little bit more of a vintage clean sound that you can, uh, that responds to the volume control on your guitar and you can kind of crank the, the guitar's volume up and uh, get a little bit of a bluesy overdrive kind of sound, then these settings are quite handy for me. And for a big, fat, ballsy rock lead sound, this is what I use. <laughs> So as I say, you know, none too shabby. You're never going to convince anybody that you're playing through, you know, um, a boogie jewel rectifier or a Fender Twin or a Marshall Plexi, but they, they work well enough for my needs, basically, just to record quick little examples uh, to ping over to students during a lesson. What I often do is, if we're on Skype, then I'll just record it and um, then um, just drag and drop the MP3 that I've recorded into the Skype chat and ping it over and the person can listen to it in real time very very handy indeed now the other amp that many people will be thinking well why isn't he using one of those is the positive grid spark and I was very very tempted to get one of those but the thing that stopped me I'll be honest was because all of the sort of amp sims and everything that that are in that positive grid spark amp I've already got them I've already got positive grid bias amp too so it's basically going to be the same sounds that I already kind of have access to and all of the rest of the stuff that uh, the spark does like all of bluetooth connectivity and you know hooking it up to an app on your phone and strumming some chords and it'll generate a, a sort of um, an automatic jam track for you would I really use any of that uh, I pondered long and hard about this and the truth is no I probably wouldn't end up using any of that so I'd be paying you know a substantial amount of money for much of the stuff I wouldn't be using so that's why I didn't get the positive grid spark as I say I'm quite happy with the uh, little Yamaha THR5 as you've heard it produces some usable sounds and it really did solve a problem for me that I was having with the uh, the online tuition so Maybe you want to check one out. I don't know. But that is pretty much it for today, folks. Hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful and informative in some small way. And if you have, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not give me a like while you're at it? Uh, don't forget the live stream tomorrow, 5 p.m. Uh, that's Friday, 5 p.m. UK time. We're going to sit and we're going to have a beer and a chat and just gossip about things of a guitar or music related nature or whatever might pop up. Um, it's uh, it's always a little bit unpredictable but I would love to see you there if you can make it it's a great way to kick off the weekend so before I go um, I wish you all a good day and now I'm going to hand over to a representative from our legal department the small print Thanks for watching folks, I just want to let you know that I receive absolutely no payment for making these videos. Uh, all equipment that I review is either bought by me with my own money or loaned to me by people who are generous enough to do so I have no commercial relationship with any equipment manufacturer other than Fred Zellert who hosts a couple of my uh, courses and if you use the discount code in the description you will get a little bit of money knocked off and I'll get a little bit of commission if you buy a Fred Zellert. Also my signature guitar made by Scott Guitars UK if you buy one of those once again I receive a small commission but you can rest assured that all opinions that you hear on this channel are mine and mine alone and they are not the result of any form of sponsorship or payment. Thank
thanks for watching see you next time bye for now